Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching again. This week, I worked more on the Leviathan painting. You know, I've been slaving at this thing for some time now, and I really start to feel drugged down by the dark mood of something like this when I do it for too long. So I thought, hey, let's lighten up the mood, spend a little bit of time enjoying my yet to be finished Unisys painting that I started months ago. I need the mood lift sometimes, you know, to be honest, pink, fluffy clouds and you know I learned from my daughter that's called a unisys. I can't think of a better way to lighten the mood. Let's just enjoy some fluffy music while we look at some of the time lapse from that. On this picture you know the the uh, feedback I get for all of the things that I post is surprisingly helpful this one uh, just this week who was it that pointed out the torso was long on that guy I'm looking at it who knows maybe it's not even better now but I did lengthen the legs and you know I honestly don't know that I would catch that if somebody didn't point it out but I've always done my art with other people watching so people do see things that look strange. I'm curious what you'd be able to pick apart about this one. <laughs> I also worked on Harry Potter. Thanks to Michael Kent who said last week, looking amazing. As always, joke, can I be a pain and ask how the Harry Potter painting is going again? Wondering if you had any time to work on it some more. Well, I mean, thanks to you saying that, I gave it some thought and I was like, you know what? I do need to get make some progress on that for my son. I had Joseph, my son, in the studio with me while I was working on the Harry Potter painting. So. I brought in the expert to tell me, you know, what, what I need to do with that picture to get it looking better. So he gave me some pointers that were real valuable too. He said, face looks red, you know, so I, I tried to change the color of the face. And then I was, you know, changing the expression of the face, getting into all the same old battles. Made the head bigger. The head was small. He said, well, the eyes look kind of high and he looks kind of old. And I, so rather than moving the eyes, I just made the head bigger. And it really, it really seemed like it helped, you know. I think a lot of the time age is seen more by the larger shapes and the portions than the smaller shadows and tiny wrinkles, you know. I don't think that has as much to do with it. But anyway, Joseph helped me, did a little bit of repositioning of the arm on the on the broomstick, put it down under so it kind of looks like he's leaning out toward that, trying to grab that snitch. Who was that that said I should shorten the torso on this guy here? Toby Fox. You know what, I appreciate that because once I made these legs longer and I was examining proportions from past studies that I had done, realizing, yeah, I did. And when I, when I stood back and looked at the painting from an angle, it really stood out more. I think sometimes my eyes just get kind of numb staring at the same picture for a long time, but, but I'm liking it with the longer legs. So I, I think that's a good improvement. Maybe, hey, maybe still not perfect, right? But, but uh, an improvement. Still working on all three of these guys, just getting the posture in such a way that gets the mood that I'm after of, you know, just being startled and afraid and running for the life, you know. This guy wanted to look like he's, you know, losing his balance, falling forward. And Toby also said, shouldn't there be reflection of the fire on the water? Well, yeah, you know, so, man, I'm telling you, it's hard to get anything past you guys. I added both of those things, and uh, so on the, on the fire, you know, it's worth mentioning that I pretty much just used magenta and white, just a very pink color to add because orange and blue make violet. And you know, on your computer screen, that bright hot pink that's kind of a purpley pink that's made from just adding blue light to the red just a little bit makes it that real, real hot pink color. So knowing that those two colors mixing makes more of, more of a light pinkish violet uh, was helpful on these waves. I just added that color on top of the, my blue waves. And then I, I don't know if you can see it, but I added some, a little bit of green in these larger waves, 
maybe I'll do more of that effect so that it looks like they're being lit up from behind by that fire also. It's not done, but I, I definitely think those were good, good little additions. So thanks, Toby. So then it was just a lot of ch trying to finish things all the way to the edge, make the picture look more complete. I'm definitely somebody that likes to see something before I start adjusting. If, if there's one method that I recommend trying, it's just quickly putting what you can on a canvas and then approaching a project as something to be adjusted, not expecting it to look right when it first goes on. You know, I, I think there's a lot of different methods. I'm not saying my method's the best. I've just found it so liberating and helpful for my progress to be okay with just, well, I can paint a guy, I'm just gonna paint him on there and he's disproportionate and weird and awkward. But, but being able to just look at it and adjust. All my techniques that I've developed over the years have been with that quick and adjustable process in mind. I think learning to mix the paint right on the canvas has helped me with speed and speed has helped me to be comfortable with just redoing something a hundred times. And because of that, I've been able to just become more and more familiar and do just do more things. You know, when you're redoing it, you're doing it more times. If you're looking for a, a different approach to painting, and uh, maybe feel stuck in a rut. Just, like I said, I found it greatly liberating. Just get the paint on there and start moving it around. And <laughs> just, you know, worry about adjusting more than trying to, trying to get that nice finished product. I'm gonna check out some comments from last week. All the nice compliments, they really make my day. They, they're, they're a huge source of encouragement for me. They keep me going, keep me thrilled about my job. So I sincerely thank you all for the the many nice compliments that I get. Claude McCumber says, uh, your ability to replicate H2O is just astounding. Thank you very much for the nice compliment. I attempt the techniques, but have yet to be comfortable with it. I'll keep practicing. Question, I have been painting on smaller surfaces. Is the size of my paintings hindering my progress? Possibly, you know, I, I like to paint on small surfaces too, but there is, uh, freedom, kind of like what I was talking about just earlier. The freedom of big motions and uh, being able to, to blow something up so that one little twitch of the wrist doesn't entirely change the shape of a brush stroke. If you're using a big brush on a big surface, it's easier to get things in the lines, for lack of a better description. You loosen up on details, you move faster, it keeps your energy level up. I think it's a good thing to add to what you're doing uh, as an exercise, as a practice that, that you know might just be a nice thrill. Small paintings are great, and who am I to say what size anybody should be painting, but I have definitely found the trying to figure things out on a large surface to be real intuitive. I mean, it's just like I, I can work with my process better. I'm in it. Um, I feel like I'm just uh, submersed in the environment of the painting and like a little mistake doesn't matter nearly as much because my canvas is big. I think big is easier to train with and then dialing down the techniques that you like from working big. Baris Akgul says, what kind of paint are you using? It is interior acrylic latex paint. And as I learned from a lot of the viewers, apparently it doesn't have latex in it, it's just acrylic paint. So wall paint, it's a low sheen satin. Chris Fonseca, Fonseca, Chris Fonseca. Were you in Idaho last week? No, I wasn't in Idaho. <laughs> I hope you went up and asked that person, hey, are you Joe Cornelius? Blossom Kitty says, I love that dreadlock picture. I posted a, a picture of my old dreadlock hairdo. Heather Edridge says, do you have any tips for painting wave scenes on a large wall? I tried your smiles, but it ended up looking really choppy because the paint dried before I could blend. But every one of your videos I watch makes me want to paint again and again. Well, thank you very much for that compliment. I have a couple tips, you know. A uh, low temperature, if you can keep the room cool, it helps a lot. Humidity level and temperature really affect dry time. I also always keep my brush wet. The bristles are always wet. I never dip a dry brush into the paint that I'm doing the waves with. I water down that reflection color. Heather is saying your smiles, uh, she's talking about the shape of a single brush stroke that I've explained in great lengths in other videos is shaped like a smile. 
like an open smile. The top of the stroke is a little more level and the underside is the area between two rising waves. So, you know, you get that shape with every stroke. It definitely can look choppy when it dries too fast on you. So if you're trying to do that technique with wet paint on wet paint, then it's valuable to just do a section, memorize your base color mix. And so, you know, if you've got this much green, this much blue, this much black, whatever it is, put it on and put it thick enough that it doesn't dry so fast. A lot of the time, my paint's not drying fast because I really do put it on heavy. And I'm confident to put it on heavy because I know that I can get the technique to look right. But putting paint on real heavy can be intimidating when you're fearful of it, not looking right, of it messing up. And I, I totally get that, I understand. But it really is the key. Uh, you just have to keep redoing and identify, you know, it's sometimes you just have to do it like a science class where you're trying this approach and whatever part doesn't look the best, you really study that and, and hold it up to whatever model you're trying to use and say, well, this is where it's different. This is how I'm going to do the technique different next time. That's always my process. Heavy paint, cold temperature as, as much as you can stand and then enough water both in the bristles of your brush and in the reflection mix that you're using that's your top coat. Those are the things I do to keep it wet enough that I can get a little bit of blending. I'll do like, you know, one, two, three, four, five strokes and then I'll go back and try to just hit the top edges of all those strokes. So I'm kind of blending the strokes I just put down and then moving over to the side. The colors match. So if they overlap, then they still match. You just want the overlaps to, you know, not have that skipping choppiness like maybe what you're seeing. And that is, that's with sometimes uh, just being careful with a nice wet brush. I hope that helps. I've definitely run into that problem as well. Ian Shedley Art says, I disagree with the guy who says the runner in the foreground has a torso that's too long. <laughs> to me it seems like he took off running so fast out of the water that his shorts have slipped down a bit. It actually looks more realistic to me. <laughs> Maybe I can keep that effect, get the best of both worlds. Hey, Steph Hamblin says, so many great pointers. I appreciate your lessons so very much. I don't work with paint much these days, but I use so many of your tricks and teachings with all the chalk art that I produce for the bar I work at. Big love. All right, hey, thanks a lot, Steph. That's very nice of you to mention that. That's a, a nice compliment, I appreciate it. It's always very satisfying to me to hear that the things that I've researched to, in order to help my paintings will transfer over into other genres of, of art as well. That's, you know, one of my favorite things to hear. All right, well, thanks for all the nice comments once again. We have a Patreon page going that helps to get all of these free videos on YouTube, helps us do a better job. So if you're interested in being a part of that, a dollar a month will get you access to the free video that we put on Patreon once a month as a thank you for the pledge there. You can also see more videos that I sell at learn.muraljoe.com. Those are videos that I've taken more time to make longer, put more explanation into. I've got a how to paint a landscape mural where I go through the different steps that I use for a project like that. If you're interested in further explanation and demonstration of those kinds of paintings, then check out learn.muraljoe.com. Once again, it's always a pleasure and I'll see you next time.